Hi everyone, as promised, we're here with Dr. John Gray, the author of Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and also you can find out more about his work at MarsVenus.com. Uh, John, good evening. Uh, thank you, well, good evening to you. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. We've been trying to, to have you on for a while, so it's, it's great to talk to you finally. I'm happy to be with you. Now, when I, I've, I've read a couple of your books, and, and one of the things that um, mostly made me understand about men and women as, as they're different is that you, you talk about women having a sense of community and, and talking about their problems and, and men hiding away when they have their own problems. How, how do you see that affecting marriages and relationships? Well, it's a fundamental misunderstanding between men and women that can create lots of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is actually, uh, certainly culture has something to do with the differences, but they're also biological. If we look at the organization of the brain, what we see is under moderate stress, there's eight times more blood flow to the emotional part of the brain mm -hmm. and estrogen levels will go up in women. <clears throat> Whereas for men, under moderate stress, testosterone goes up in, in the body mm -hmm. and uh, estrogen levels go down. So women end up having eight times the emotional response of a man when problems are little. Right. But if a man has a big problem, then his testosterone levels will convert into estrogen and he will suddenly have strong emotions. Right. So <clears throat> what happens here is that when one's emotional uh, and stressed as a result of that, uh, if you talk about your feelings, talk about what's bothering you, mm -hmm. uh, it will produce a hormone called oxytocin and that will lower your stress. So for women under moderate stress, being able to talk about things that are bothering them is very, very beneficial. But for men, actually distancing yourself from your emotions is a natural reaction. Mm -hmm. And you go against that natural reaction if you start talking about your complaints or talking about what's bothering you. Right. And this is really sabotaging relationships today because it's beneficial if a man has a big problem to talk about his feelings. But if he, <clears throat> if he has you know, moderate stress, uh, to talk about it actually lowers his testosterone, raises his estrogen, makes him feminized, and weakens him, causes him to become angry, irritable, pouty, and negative. So right. that's one side, is women are trying to get men to talk more. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and when women do talk, men tend to misinterpret it by thinking she's saying that what she's talking about is a big problem. Right. Because men only get emotional about big problems, so when she's getting emotional about something, he misinterprets it as if she's saying it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And then that makes him emotional because he thinks, well, if she's saying he's a big problem, then that's a big problem to him. So all of that is a very confusing thing. And understanding our differences in this positive way based on our wearing can help us respond differently in ways that don't escalate tension, mm -hmm. but de-escalate it. Absolutely. I'm just confused <laughs> hearing you talking about <laughs> I think, do you think there should be a balance of, of men? You know, usually we men, we don't like to talk about problems. We, we, we run away for, for a while, then come back. Do you think there should be a balance? Men should force themselves a little bit to talk a little bit more. And That's women what to I understand. just said. That's the wrong information. That's the problem today. This is the over-feminization of men. Psychology has done it, and mm -hmm. you see, psychology, 90% of the people, I'm a psychologist, and 90% of the people that come to me are women. Mm -hmm. And when men come, it's usually some big problem, and then it's very valuable to talk about your feelings. If right. your estrogen levels are high and you're feeling strong emotions, you should talk about your feelings if it's a big problem. Otherwise, the old-fashioned form of analysis where you analyze what the problem is, where do you think it comes from, what can you do about it, be objective about it, but leave the emotions to the side. Right. So what we're seeing is huge problems of men becoming overly emotional, then becoming violent, then saying mean things, then losing their attraction to their wives, cheating on their wives as a result. Mm -hmm. And that's because men are not educated on how to be men, which is to contain your emotions. I'm not saying ignore them, Mm -hmm. I'm saying contain them, analyze them, and let them go because they're irrational. Right. You know, the other day my wife was annoying me. I contained it inside. <clears throat> Next day I just analyzed it and said I was getting upset over nothing. Don't make a big deal out of it and let it go. Right. That's how men should deal with stuff. 
and women should not. They should talk to a girlfriend about it and then let it go. Mm -hmm. They should burden him with her feelings because he's typically going to misunderstand it. This right. has been going on for centuries. Historically, women never shared their complaints and feelings with men. They knew it would upset men, mm -hmm. and then they would pull out the worst in men. Right. I, I love that approach. Actually, I, I like what you said because being a man, we, we like to... Um, you know, explode about things when we're forced to talk about them. Now, dealing with couples for so long as you have been, uh, what, what do you think is the, the major complaint that couples struggle with? Is it that? Is it lack of communication? Well, definitely our communication problems are there. It's not the lack of communication. Sometimes it's too much communication. <laughs> when they talk, they misunderstand each other. They say the wrong things. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, you know, what, what's happening today in the world <clears throat> is we have a whole new whole new way, we have to apply a whole new set of rules, guidelines to successful relationships because we're no longer looking for a role mate, we're looking for a soul mate. We're looking for a partner that can provide emotional fulfillment. But at the same time, we have these roles. You know, if you've got a baby, you suddenly need your partner more, for example. Mm -hmm. If you're both, both, both out there working in the world, making money, you come home, you're stressed out, you need a different kind of support. Women need one kind of support, men need another kind of support in order to reestablish the normal hormonal balance. But you know, as the more masculine women become, mm -hmm. if they can't balance that with their femininity, it's a disaster in their relationships. And the more, <clears throat> the more feminine men become, uh, which is happening more and more as they're talking about their feelings, and it's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with women becoming more masculine. Uh, as long as they can find the balance. And for men to become more feminine, it's a good thing as long as they can find the balance. I'm right. very much aware of my emotions, for example, but I don't throw them at my partner and I don't let them control my behavior unless they're positive emotions. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to hold these feelings, the female side inside. You know, one of the biggest problems today in terms of men being too far on their female side is when I talk to men who want divorce, they basically <clears throat> are the men who want, to, who want to cheat on their wives. It's the same dynamic. They're not happy in their marriage. And I say, why aren't you happy? And they say, you know, I love my wife, but no matter what I do, it's not enough to make her happy. Right. Now, see, this, is the, this, is, this is a new phenomenon. This is the soulmate experience. Historically, mm -hmm. men did not care that much about their wives' happiness. Uh, you know, they wanted their wives to be happy, but their, well, their sense of self-esteem was based upon their work not the happiness of their wife. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, you know, in, in the past, women didn't even know they could have sexual climax. Men didn't know how to give women sexual climax for the majority of the population of the planet. Still, half the women in the world don't even know what climax is and half the women that know what it is don't experience it. Mm -hmm. And particularly in marriage after a few years, it goes away. Now, climax is her maximum fulfillment and today, a man says, I don't want to have sex with my wife if she's doing it out of obligation. I want her to want to have sex. I want her to want to enjoy sex. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a whole new consciousness. In the past, men, men wanted sex. It was an obligation of a wife to do it. It was her duty to do it. I would never want to have sex with my wife if she's doing it because it's her duty. Mm -hmm. I want it because it makes her happy and she's fulfilled and she's looking forward to it. That's a man experiencing on his female side. Right. So we have a whole, you know, distorted view of what it means for men to be on their female side is for men to be like a girlfriend or something mm -hmm. and sharing feelings like a girl and, and reacting to things the way girls do and women do. Uh, this is not going to be successful in relationships. So men are just kind of listening to what women say they want and doing that. And then the relationship is a disaster. You know, it's, I've done this over and over, which is 30 years ago, women said, I want a man who talks about his feelings. So I taught men to do that. And the women said, I'm not attracted to him anymore. He has too many problems. I feel like I have to walk on eggshells with him. I feel like he's a child. So, so it kills the passion. Is it fair to say that over the years you've, you've changed your perception on that? No, the same perception. Mm -hmm. Oh, before I wrote Men Are From Mars, before I developed the Mars Venus ideas 30 years ago. Right. I had first been like a standard psychologist, which is mm -hmm. feminizing men. I get if you it. go to universities today, and you most, uh, you know, when I'm saying most, I'm just saying most, there's always exceptions to everything. Mm -hmm. There are good therapists out there. The majority are destroying relationships that I've seen. That what they teach in the universities, most of what they teach in the universities is that men should be like women and that men are the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and this is just absurd. 
But why do they think that? Because 90% of the people who come to counseling are women. So you just hear women complaining about their husbands and women wanting to change their husbands. That's the first thing I teach women is that you can't change him. You have to learn to love him. Right. Changing somebody is not love. Don't pretend that you love this person if you're trying to change them. Mm -hmm. and then he says, well, how do I get more attention? How do I get more affection? I said, first, love them the way they are. Then learn how to ask what you want in a language that's not complaining or demanding. You know, this is what love is. We have to, you know, we, we profess to be all loving and full of love. And then we want to change somebody. We want to blame somebody. We want to criticize someone all under the guise mm -hmm. of I'm improving you. I'm helping you. Well, I don't want your help unless you, I'm asking for it. And that's the truth for women too. Women don't want men helping them unless mm -hmm. a woman's asking for it. So men give advice to women all the time, tell her she, what she should feel, what she shouldn't feel. Women don't like that. Mm -hmm. But women give advice to men on what to do. Men don't want that. What gives us the right to control somebody like this? So we have a very neurotic society, worse than it's ever been between men and women. That's why there's so much divorce. The potential is greater today for a more fulfilling relationship. But what you're doing there is adding new expectations, new needs, new desires. Mm -hmm. How do we fulfill those? Which ones of those are unrealistic? What is realistic? What can you have? And the irony is the bottom line is lower your expectations, everybody. And actually mm -hmm. you can find what real love is, which is accepting someone the way they are. And you have a chance if you learn new skills at what I have. 30 years of marriage, and I'm madly in love with my wife. I'm totally a, a passionate connection, mm -hmm. which is what people rarely have experienced in the past. So that's the vision that you right. can stay with somebody, be monogamous with someone and experiencing lasting passion instead of dead bed, which is what most couples experience. Right. I, I love what you were saying earlier about, you know, controlling emotions, thinking through what you're going to do, what you heard in the relationship. But this, you, you touched on... Um, on cheating earlier. And I wanted to find out, I usually say that if, if someone cheats in a marriage, the solution is not just to find out that the person cheated and f either forgiving or moving on, but it's to find the, the root as to why they did that. Why, why do you think that people usually are led to do something like cheating in, in a marriage? Well, I, I'm a, completely aligned with what you just said. I agree with you completely. I'm just, I just, I, I just get sick to my stomach when I hear people say, oh, you know, my partner cheated on me, whether it was a man or woman, so we're getting a divorce. And we have three children. I mean, come on, give me a break. Now, this is just absurd that we think that just because your partner cheats on you, you should, therefore you should get a divorce. You should get a divorce if you can't love each other. And don't pretend that you're loving them if you can't forgive them for having an affair. But the reality is when an affair happens, it happens for two reasons. One is a person is dissatisfied and not getting what they need in the relationship. That's one. And the other one is simply stupidity. And that person needs to be, wake up and understand that having an affair is going to hurt your partner. Mm -hmm. So you've got stupid people or immature people who basically, and it, it tends to fall in the category, and this category tends to be more men in my experience of working with people, is they're out of town. There's, a, there's an opportunity uh, and they could actually be very satisfied in their marriage, but men get horny and women mm -hmm. do too, of course, but men do get hornier more, mm -hmm. way more, 10 times more. That's what women need to understand. It's all about testosterone. He's got 30 times more testosterone and it has a huge impact on how, how much men want to have sex, particularly if they've got healthy testosterone levels. So suddenly he's wanting to have sex. He's not, his wife's nowhere around. So some woman's coming on to him. There's an opportunity here. So he thinks if my wife doesn't know about it, it's not going to affect her. Mm -hmm. But what I want to explain to these men, it does affect her. You know, some people will say, well, she's probably going to find out one day. And, and a guy can easily dismiss that thought. Well, no, I'll just keep it secret. No, it, it, if you, what you're doing is you made a sacred contract when you get married to share your love monogamously. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm addressing. The people who start out and say, we want a monogamous relationship. It's a betrayal of trust to have a, to cheat on your partner. But it's mm -hmm. not the end of the world crime that you have to end the relationship. How do you stop loving someone because they love somebody else? Come on. But it does cause a wound. Right. And that wound has to be healed. And so you have to understand why the partner did it. And if it's stupidity, you just share how much it hurts and how important it is to feel special. That's what a relationship is. It's fulfilling the soulmate need.
if you're right. living as role mates throughout history men have had affairs women have had affairs and it's not a big deal as long as you don't embarrass your partner and that's been acceptable there's nothing a moral judgment here it's just what standard do you want for your relationship today today right. We have the opportunity for experiencing a soulmate, a connection on the soul, experience a lifetime of growing mm -hmm. love, lasting passion, personal development, full expression of potential. All these things are possible to us through having a truly nurturing, fulfilling relationship. And most people want that. That's when they get married. Nobody goes down the marriage aisle thinking, okay, we're going to have a great honeymoon that I'm going to be cheating on my partner. So. Imagine how good you felt when you were directing mm -hmm. all your love to this one person and that feeling, that's your soul talking to you. That's your potential. And so many people don't realize that. And part of it is just men, men think, oh, I'll get, I can get away with it. My partner doesn't know. Now, the other reason for having affairs is generally why women have affairs and many men have affairs. And that would be because I'm not getting it at home. I'm mm -hmm. not experiencing the magic. I'm not experiencing the passion. I don't feel connected to my partner. I'm just not turned on to my partner. But give me somebody else and I get turned on and you mm -hmm. suddenly feel alive. You, your body comes alive. You feel young and vibrant. It, of course you want that. Why should I be feel, uh, stuck in a marriage? It's like a prison where this person resents me. This person un is unappreciative of me. This person ignores me. This person neglects me. I'm stuck here and I can go meet somebody else and they're like all excited and I'm excited. Wow, that's right. like going to heaven. Why wouldn't I want that? <laughs> so that's why people have affairs. And they just, you know, I look at uh, Al Gore, who was our vice president. And, you know, he's at, I think he was like 65 years old. He got a divorce from his wife, who they were supposed to have the ideal marriage. I knew their children. They're all happy family. They all get together. Now, why does he divorce his wife? He says, we're friends, but we realize it's best for us to go our separate ways. Well, that's just political speak for, hey, I got a hot secretary I'm, I'm having great sex with that never felt better in my life. Right. Why do I want to stay with my wife? But I'll be friends with her. So we have, we have un unfortunately, we have, these, we have this potential of being fully alive through soulmate sex, for example, and soulmate interaction, fully love, but we don't know how to sustain it. And I feel sorry for people because they don't have the skills. They go to therapists who teach the wrong stuff. They read mm -hmm. books that teach the wrong stuff. They follow their parents' advice. They do the wrong stuff. This is new stuff. And yet what's unique to everybody is most everybody wants this, what I'm talking about, but they don't know how to get it. Right. So I think my, my, my final two questions would be, do, do you believe that if there is unfaithfulness in a marriage, in a relationship, do you believe it's possible to regain 100% of that trust you lost in the person. You know, there's one book I read by a lady and it's called The Greatest, My Husband's Affair Was the Greatest Thing That Ever Happened to Me. And because when the affair happened, it gave them a chance to recognize how unhappy they were with each other and see how both people were responsible for the affair. And this example, the woman was able to see that her coldness and her rejection and her disapproval and her inability to find happiness within herself, her neediness, her depending on him to make her happy, she saw that that was her mistake just as her husband having the affair made his mistake. Right. So when people are mature enough to recognize when one partner has a, makes a mistake, two people are involved. And this takes a higher level of consciousness. I don't think everybody is there. But if you, I help my clients get to that place, I'm a tough therapist. When you have problems, I'll have people look at, there's no victims in my office. I see we're all capable and responsible for what happens to us. Even if somebody is a bad person, why are we staying with them? Sometimes that's the reason. What are you doing mm -hmm. to contribute to that problem? I don't see victims in my practice. There are victims in the world, and the reason mm -hmm. they're victims is they have no education on realizing how they're creating their problems. You know, if I was driving my fancy car down to the, to the store and somebody keyed the side of my car. It cost $2,000 to fix. So am I a victim? No, I shouldn't have been driving my car in that neighborhood. I shouldn't have even mm. been driving that car. What I did is I sold that car because it just it was an expensive car. It bred resentment in the people mm. in my neighborhood. And so why would I do that? So right. we have to get out of this victim state and get into another state, which is the state of what works and what doesn't work and think of the whole picture. And when, when marriages fail, okay, what's not working here? Take responsibility for your side of it. Then you can find forgiveness and then you can rebuild the trust and it can be a real trust. Right. right. So I think my final question would be, you know, I'm sure you can't 
consolidate 30 years of experience working with relationships into one advice. But if there was one most important piece of advice for, for couples, what would you say that was? If you're having problems, stop blaming your partner and recognize how you're creating them. One. Two is if you're having problems and you're blaming your partner and you can't recognize how you've created it and you can't really, otherwise you would have done that, realize you need help. And you need to get help from somebody who actually has a great relationship, not some one of these divorced psychologists or something, <laughs> or somebody who's recommending drugs if you're depressed and you're not happy. This is all nonsense. We should learn how to make ourselves happy. And if, if you're not happy and you do have a biological problem, instead of taking antidepressants and these drugs that only make the problem worse, that's proven to make the problem worse, Find the natural solutions for it. And I've written lots of books and my website has all kinds of natural solutions for anxiety, for depression, for unhappiness, for lack of energy, lack of motivation. Because sometimes the problem is we just are eating the wrong foods. We're not taking care of our body mm. or we're not taking care of our mind or we're too busy to enjoy our lives. And we're the ones who are at fault, not our partners. Always take it back to yourself and you have a chance of changing. But if you have problems, why do you have them? Because you don't know better. So you need to get help. People need to get help. The challenge is who do you get help from? Find mm -hmm. somebody that inspires you who's also an example of what you want. Okay, Dr. John Gray, thank you very much. I want to reiterate what you said. Don't, don't seek help from the wrong people and, and try to find help from, you know, for yourself to be happy first. Don't try to change your partner. I think that's great advice. If you want to get more advice and, and learn more about uh, the work that Dr. John Gray does, you can visit his website, marsvenus.com. Dr. John Gray, thank you very much for being with us on the show. Yeah, a real pleasure. I love your ideas. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. Thank you.